Number two seeded Wagner, the hottest team in the NEC, has won nine in a row and is looking to advance to its first conference final since 2005. Number four seeded Mount St. Mary's, a dramatic last second quarterfinal win over St. Francis of Brooklyn, has a poise to return to the title contest for the second consecutive year. Coming up, it's the Seahawks and the Mount in a Northeast Conference semifinal showdown next. Well, they tell us it's 50 degrees outside in New York City, but it feels like 70 after a very long winter. Get your popcorn and peanuts ready, folks, because here we go. We are live from the Spiro Center in Staten Island, and this is Northeast Conference basketball. Today, it's a men's semifinal with the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers taking on the Wagner Seahawks. Hi again, everybody. I'm Paul Dottino, along with the capper, Tim Capstraw. Glad you could join us for tournament action. And when you talk about NEC tournament play, you're talking about a very unique format, folks. And in round number one, we had some real good ones, Cap. Yeah, uh, uh, Paul, I think the Northeast Conference does it better than every conference in the country. They reward the higher seed with home court advantage, and then they reseed after each round and understand the importance. This is win or go home. This is basically the NCAA tournament for these teams. This is game number one of our doubleheader on many of these same stations. You'll see the Robert Morris game directly following us. Okay, we are talking about two teams here today, Cap, that are probably the most energetic in the conference. They sure are, and they do it in different ways. Mount St. Mary's is energetic in their full court pressure. They try to turn you over. They love to play up, fast break, shoot the three. Wagner, on the other hand, energetic because they play solid defense. They really grind it out. They, their pressure on the ball is intense, and they're really focused on the interior with great size and shot blocking. Okay, Capra, so who are today's two key players to watch? Well, for Mount St. Mary's, Rashad Wack, and he is as complete an all-around player as there is in this conference. He has the ability to drive the ball, but he's an elite defender, and I tell you what, he became Mr. Big Shot, draining that shot the other night to put Mount here in the semis. Biggest shot of the year for Rashad Wack. And for Wagner College Seahawks, it's Kenny Ortiz. He's their anchor, he's their point guard. He is their leader. He just kind of controls everything. He has got a toughness. He rebounds, he steals, he can score when needed. And believe me, he just represents everything good about Wagner and their success. And we'll look at today's starting lineups. They're brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com. We look at the starters for the mount, and Julian Norfleet is a second-team NEC pick. He's in the top five with nearly 18 points a game and also with six assists a night. Now, the mount is led by second-year coach Jamie Christian. He was a three-year captain for this team who graduated back in 2004. And now the starters for the Seahawks. Latif Rivers is a third-team All-NEC pick. He puts up nearly 14 points a night. And Wagner is directed by Coach Bashir Mason. He's in his second season, and it's his fourth year as part of the program. These teams, by the way, have split their season series. The Mount won by nine, and then Wagner won by five. You get a feel for the style of play. Wagner go up tempo when needed, and Rashad Wack, three-point shots will abound for Mount St. Mary's in this game. Wagner tried to do it with defense, turn it into offense. This just has a making of great, two contrasting styles and a really interesting matchup. The scores were 89 to 80 in favor of the Mount back on January the 16th. Norfleet had 28 and Wack had 27 in that one. On February the 22nd, Wagner won at 71-66. It was Ortiz who had 21 to lead the way. Our officials are Brian Dorsey, Frank Scagliata, and John Courtney. Wagner controls the basketball and their home whites as we open play. That is Kenny Ortiz. And Folahan has the rebound. You don't have to adjust the volume on your sets, folks. It gets very loud at the Spiro Center. And a slam of Jim Oh, the wall. Anderson, baby, right out of the gate. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. And neither did Mount St. Mary's. Wow. 
For those of you new to the NEC, Dewan Anderson skies and flies better than anybody in this league. I tell you what, I, I turn in the corner and just goes to the other side and just lets it rip. I'm trying to stay calm, trying to stay under control in this game. It's a big game. And then Dewan Anderson does that to me. Wow. Yeah, you could throw that out the window. Oh, like man. That. Oh, wow. By the way, Anderson just picked up our first whistle of the day as well on the other side. There's Norfleet, who, by the way, was a shooting guard until midway through last season when they switched him over to the point guard position, and he has adapted very well. He's a lefty, by the way, and fires an NBA three. Parker has the rebound. That is Latif Rivers. And our first turnover of the day is by the Seahawks. And that's a big key to the Mounts game. It, it sure is. And, and taking care of the basketball, huge, huge key for Wagner. Northfleet from three on the follow. Well, you get a feel for the style of play for Mount immediately. Threes are starting to go up. Northfleet letting it fly. Good follow-up. And here's their extended pressure that Wagner must handle. Here was quickly into the forecourt. Now, Kapler, we talked to both of these coaches this week, and Coach Christian wants this game in the 80s. And on the other side, Wagner wants to keep it down to the 60s. We got a whistle right here on the mound. Charge that one to Norfleet. That is his first. As the season has progressed, and especially in these last nine games, Kenny Ortiz has tried to be much more assertive offensively. You see him trying to be aggressive here in the early going. Wack takes a quick breather. Ortiz calling out the set play. Here's Fullahan for Ortiz. A lot of movement by the Seahawks. Anderson drives, and that's the second turnover by the Seahawks. Ash into the forecourt for Prescott, rejected by Anderson. Great effort by Dwan Anderson after turning it over on one end. Didn't quit on the play, ran all the way back. And again, we've seen him display his athleticism with that early slam, and that time with the rejection, he can really fly. Marcus Burton enters the game for Wagner right now. Replacing Anderson. Nwandu is in for Wack. Coming up on 15 seconds to shoot. This is Prescott from downtown. The rebound comes to Burton who has been a real spark over the second half of the season for Wagner. Rivers can't get it. Bolahan tips it, but it's controlled by Prescott. Plucked away from behind by Parker. And both teams must be uptight because it's, it's a bit helter skelter. Exactly what I was going to allude to. You can see some tension. Coaches have both subbed a couple guys out to kind of regroup his Burton. May have walked. Bolahan, Burton. Rejected by Danaher. Well, you know, when it's one and done and it's winner go home, Paul, there's a reason. There is a reason to be nervous right now. Foul's going to go out Orlando Parker, his first and the team's second. Think about the seniors on the floor. For a number of guys, this will be their last college game they ever play in. And that is a, a, a tough thing. And think about the emotion and the effort that is going to be put forth in this game. Precisely why the Mountaineers, who trailed by 19 points with 10 minutes to go in the first round game against St. Francis of Brooklyn, were not only able to come back with a blood and guts performance, but the fans stormed the court after it was done. Whack for three. Well, Wagner goes zone right there, and I don't know if that's dangerous against a good, that's a little dangerous against such a good three-point shooting team. Wack saw that zone and his eyes lit up. Shoots threes at 37%. He is fourth in the Northeast Conference. Ortiz against Nwandu. Here's Burton. He handles the ball extremely well. Rivers the quick three way off, but Moody runs it down. Ortiz to the basket. Out of a broken play that time, and that's Ortiz for a good answer. Wow! Ahead with the block. 
Ortiz out of control. Whacked for three. Bullahan, a factor though, his size and his presence. You know, you think about wearing you down with pressure on the perimeter, Fullahan's height, length, and rejecting ability and rebounding. It's gonna look to wear down Mount St. Mary's on the interior. Captain, the way these teams are handling the basketball, I wonder if it's actually a hot potato <laughs> instead. <laughs> it, it is, they are scrambling, they are turning it over. Graves with the steal on Burton. Underneath, Luandu can't get it. The follow is by Gregory Graves. Wow, the activity, and Wagner's got to settle down. Again, turnovers are the biggest key of all, and Mount is getting this game playing at a hectic, frenetic pace, and that's exactly what they exactly what they want. Five minutes gone by. Remember, Wagner is second in the conference in defense, allowing only 68 points a game, but allowing less than 60 a game during their nine-game winning streak. And the more chaotic the game, the more in favor of Mount St. Mary's it is. Ortiz a bit out of control for Mario Moody. That's outside of his range cap but it's not got a bounds by the mound. Well, it's an early 7-4 Mountaineers lead, but we'll see what happens after these teams settle down. Back with more after this. I am a student. I am an athlete. This is my pride. This is my family. In the classroom and on the field. A home away from home. Bound to community, committed to excellence. Determined to succeed. I will not fear my opponents, but I will respect them. I will fail, but I won't quit. I am a player. I am a teammate. I will rise to the challenge. This, this is, is NC Pride. Pride. Northeast Conference Basketball is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, the official hotel partner of the NEC. And by Snyder's of Hanover. Taste how great a pretzel can be. We are about five and a half minutes into this one. It's the NEC semifinals from Staten Island, New York. Paul Dottino and Tim Capstra with you, and Matt Bartucci is along for the ride. Hey, guys, good afternoon. Well, I had the chance to check in with Mountain Head Coach Jimmy and Christian in the days leading up to this game, and so much respect for the man on the other bench, Bashir Mason, and what he's been able to do in the first two years at Wagner as far as getting his kids to buy in to his defensive system and that hard-nosed, up-in-your-face man-to-man -man that they employ. But early on here, first few minutes, it's mayhem winning out, guys. Thanks, Matt. You know, you recall last year, Coach Christian actually brought the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers to the NEC Championship game in his first season as a head coach, but they were upended by LIU, which won its third consecutive title cap. A couple young, two of the youngest coaches in the country. Bashir Mason is the youngest, and Jamie and Christian, uh, one of the youngest, but and both coaches are going to have a long, long successful career. And look at the turnover number. Only four in the first round game for the Seahawks against the Terriers, and three already today. Yeah, the pace, the early pace, exactly what uh, Matt just alluded to. The mayhem has been favorable. That was an impressive post move by Nea Ball Fullahan. His progress along with Orlando Parker and Mario Moody on the interior has been a big reason for the surge of the surge of Wagner late in the season. Bolahan averaging only four points a game. Northfleet, his second bucket for four. He is creative, Julian Northfleet. Again, he was a two guard early in his career, has converted to the point. Here's Ortiz against pressure. All the way to the rack. He has four as well. Hey, you gotta have your stars step up in big games, and Ortiz is looking to make plays early, as is this guy, Northway. This is a really critical matchup, the point guard matchup. Both are scoring, scoring point guards that are outstanding, especially Ortiz defensively. Prescott 
along the baseline. Outside for Byron Ash. He's a freshman from Washington, D.C., number two, who shoots threes at 37%. Just another of the long-range bombers that the Mountaineers have. While well, Kenny Ortiz is in the early go and has been able to beat people off to dribble up top, he's gotten some freedom, he's gotten some opening, and he's capitalized. The leaders take over in big games, and that is the leader of Wagner. The Mount turns it over with a palming violation. Fullahan and Rivers go to the bench. Anderson back into the game for the Seahawks, along with Parker. Wagner basketball down 9-8 to eight in the early going. Terrence Bailey walking into the gym. Seahawks legend, Capra knows him real well as the Seahawks will reset with 19 seconds to shoot. <laughs> the man who still is atop the NEC's scoring chart, Mr. Bailey. Over 2,000 points, Cap. Uh, Clock at 15 right now. Wagner's got to know that. Here's Moody. Boy, Wack can really defend. Stealing from Ortiz but comes up short. And then the foul on the rebound. That's gonna be on Graves over the back. That is his first and the team's second. Their fourth turnover of the game. And for Wagner, in the early going, they're having issues with this amount of pressure. Well, no surprise, Cap, because the Mountaineers turn over their opposition an average of 13 times a game, which is the most in this conference as Graves takes a quick seat. Good pressure now on Marcus Burton. They are really extending it. And when Ortiz is not on the floor, it's a tough place to put the ball. It's a foul on Wack, and that's an interesting foul. I think they're going to have 22 for Sean Wack. That's his first and the team's third. So it's Rivers, Anderson, Moody, Parker, and Burton for the Seahawks. It's Wack, Ash, Donaher, Prescott, and Nwandu for the Mountaineers. Deflected away by Nwandu. And it will be Wagner ball. But Mount can make you feel uncomfortable. And Wagner's got to settle down against this pressure. Look at that. Again, nothing is coming easy for Wagner. Well, Cap, I would think that the Mountaineers understand they caught lightning in a bottle with that comeback last week. They want to start out keeping this game as close as possible, especially in a hostile environment. Yeah, very tight, very crowded on the side of the floor here. They're getting it into Burton. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the first half. It's a nine to eight mound lead. Moody underneath off the look from the team Rivers. His first bucket, Moody averages nine a game, a junior out of Jersey City. And when he gets going, he is really a force off the bench. Wanda with a dribbling exhibition and the kickball by Burton, but the officials don't call it that way. 12 seconds to shoot. Wanda lost the handle, and then we get a foul. It's going to go on Moody. Well, the key to any offensive possession is ball movement. You see Burton right there, and then Latif Rivers with a good vision finding Moody down low. Wagner's been able to capitalize around the rim. That's where they're going to be able to score as opposed to Mount, who likes to work it from the three-point line. Beautiful feed in that previous possession by that guy, Latif Rivers. Right. Moody picks up his third foul in the team's third. Will Miller checks into the game for the first time, replacing Sam Prescott. Rivers off the steal! Unable to finish the rebound by Ash. And then Moody comes up with the theft and converts. Boost off the bench again by Mario Moody. Wagner's well, well, got outstanding contributions in their, in their streak, whether it be Marcus Burton or Mario Moody off the bench. Moody averages nine points and six rebounds a game. And oh, by the way, did we tell you he's also got 36 blocks? So he does it on both ends, Cap. Whack. That's wow. a two. Rainbow two that time because Anderson challenged that shot very well. See if they can score, they can set their pressure. Five points for Whack, and it's 12 to 11. Wagner, and there's a palm on Moody. Stars got to step up in big games, and seniors got to get it done. Rashad Whack does not want this to be his last game. His hot hand continues.
Friends, you can now follow the Northeast Conference on all your favorite social networking sites at NEC Sports. Get exclusive content and interact with the NEC on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Google+. Also, be sure to check out the NEC's official website at northeastconference.org. The website features all the latest news and notes from around the league, as well as a link to the NEC's official web store. That's northeastconference.org. Paul Dottino, Tim Capstraw, Matt Martucci with you at the Spiro Center in Staten Island. Now, this is only game one of semifinal Saturday. Coming up later on today, the survivor of this one will face off against the winner of Robert Mars and St. Francis U. It's do or die, Capper. Two teams will escape, two teams will go home. <laughs> exactly, and that's why there's so much pressure and intensity. Again, the seniors, last game of the year, Northfleet out of it. Quickly out of a timeout that time. That was a little too easy. That was surprising. A little high screen action for Northfleet, and when he goes to his left, He's lethal. Northfeet with his third field goal of the day. He's got six points. This is a guy who's got over 1,500 points in his career. This is Orlando Pucker. Another guy that stepped up the bigs of Wagner. That has been their transformation of the season. Their scoring ability of the bigs. Pucker averaging seven points per ball game. A senior out of Orlando, Florida. Will Miller from three. You better be a close talker to Will Miller. That's why he's on the floor, only a freshman, Will Miller. We're going to see those threes for years to come. Miller shoots him at 36% from downtown. Ortiz driving to the basket, the bucket, and the foul. They cleared a side of the floor for Kenny Ortiz, their leader right now. They give a little space, nobody else on the floor. Kind of a post up from about 15 feet away. He's able to get the ball and finish it. See, Ortiz does it differently than the Mount players. Mount players will do it with finesse and three point shooting. Ortiz will do it with power and drives. And he is off to an excellent start in this game. That's his seventh point. And Ortiz's role has evolved, again, I'll, I'll repeat it, because he used to just be a defender, kind of do all the little things, but he has become a scorer, and he is scoring here in the biggest game of his career. Prescott in for Miller. Now, Norfleet goes to the bench with two fouls. That's the fourth team foul on the mount. Nwandu back into the game for the Mountaineers. A very big foul. Anytime Wack, remember, Norfleet and Wack combined for 55 in the game that they won in Mount earlier this year. There's a bump and a blocking foul on Fullahan. That's going to be his first and the team's fourth. We mentioned that the Mountaineers knocked off St. Francis of Brooklyn 72 to 71 in round number one. Wagner had a much easier time capper. They dispatched Central Connecticut 83 to 69. But again, this team is his hot as it can be with nine wins in a row. Looking to get off to a good start today. Fall ahead with the block, and it goes out of bounds. He set a Wagner record this year with 84 swats. He's always in great position, too. And he's never running from a, 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 an awkward position. His positioning was great. That's why his length and blocking can always be a factor. Chasing him off the line, excellent job by Latif Rivers. Clock is gonna be at 12, at 10. Prescott for three. Too strong, nearly tipped in by Anderson. And here comes Ortiz. And wisely, the Seahawks slow it down. That's the tempo they want. They wanna play controlled game and be able to utilize their, their size and strength. Wagner with the ball and a one point lead. That's Rivers. The reverse layup doesn't go. Danaher with the board. Prescott, the jump pass for Wack. Into the corner. The three doesn't go for Ash. But the mount keeps it alive. And then Danaher lost it out of bounds. You know, when four hands around you, you just want to work quick. You want to get the ball and get it up and avoid a shot blocker. The relentless pursuit of Kenny Ortiz, number 15, hustling all over the floor, trying to affect shots, make plays, 
And again, Fullahan comes over, boy, he makes you a little nervous. And why this Kenny Ortiz, the more I watch him, the more I like him. Everything about him. Ortiz this year was named NEC Defensive Player of the Year for the third straight time. That is the first time in conference history. So you have him defending on the perimeter, and you have Fullahan defending in the paint. Yeah, now that, that's very good. No doubt about it. Byron Ash picks up a foul on the inbounds. Here's that the, is his first and the team's fifth. Boy, Mountain plays a style that looks like a lot of fun. They just really go after you. Jim Phelan was the same way. His teams always looked like they were having a lot of fun, a lot of freedom. Some of his 800 plus wins. Jim Phelan, 700th and 800th win I was a part of. He beat me in both games. What a smile I might add. <laughs> Underneath, that is Sanat, who was fouled by Nwandu. Greg Sanat coming in off of the bench, immediately attacking the rim. Nwandu picks up his first and the team's sixth. They'll end down the basketball underneath the Mountaineers basket. Orlando Parker checking back in for Folahan. A decision for Jamie and Christian in this half as Folahan sits on. I think he's going to evaluate the score, but you know Julian Northfleet sitting out the rest of the half. That, that's a decision coaches have to make. With two fouls, you, you just flat out sit out the guy. I think you've got to read the score and see how everything is going. Well, with a one-point game, he might yeah, be willing to gamble. Yeah. That's Dewan Anderson. Had a lot of spacing. Rivers attacks the rim. Doesn't get it. Tipped up, and Rivers has the ball back. There's the big advantage Wagner has. Their ability, not only their bigs, but even their guard to get in on the offensive backboard. Second chance opportunity. Here's Ortiz again. Anderson for three. Short. Good Rebound block. to Watt. Good block out by Graves. That's what he's got to do. Here's Nuwanda. And teams have had a hard time off the boards against Wagner. During this nine-game Seahawks winning streak, Capper, they're out-rebounding their opposition by almost nine a game. That is Prescott. That First was basket. an excellent job of pulling up and filling up that time by Sam Prescott. Especially with Northfleet sitting down, Prescott. When Prescott has a big game, he is the X factor for the Mount. He averages over 10 and a half a game. The senior out of Philadelphia with his first points. And the Mount regains a one-point lead. Ortiz attacks the rim, and we got a whistle here. We will take a timeout. Well, Capo, let's look at this. Another senior that knows this could be his last game, Sam Prescott with the pull-up. And the fill up, impressive. As part of its commitment to good sportsmanship, the NEC continues to participate in the NCAA's Respect Campaign, a program designed to enhance the awareness of sportsmanship, both on campus and within the community. Respect, it's the name of the game. Paul Dottino and Tim Capstro with you. It's the NEC semifinals in Staten Island, where the Mount leads Wagner 18 to 17 with 7.02 left in the first half. And let's go back to Matt Mautucci. Paul, Tim had a chance to listen in on the Wagner huddle and Bashir Mason's message to his guys during that last time out and this one, just relax, slow down, compose yourself and make a good pass against the pressure. You don't have to do anything too fast. Be quick, but don't hurry, guys. Mason has won a lot of games over his basketball career. First as a high school player at St. Benedict's here in New Jersey, then at Drexel 
where he graduated in 2007 and is still in the top five all time in assists and steals. And oh yeah, by the way, he also scored 1,100 points. Now, a great player and an unbelievable defensive player was Bashir Mason at Drexel. He was the Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman. He was all defensive all, all four years for Bruiser Flint. And, you know, his team has taken on his personality, especially this guy, Kenny Ortiz, who, again, that's his eighth point. And Bashir Mason has to see a lot of his game in this guy. Wadu picked up the foul. That is his second and the team's seventh right before the break. Ortiz with both ends of the free throws. Nine points to lead all scorers, and Wagner jumps on top by one. They're going to play zone this possession. Remember the first time they played zone, Wack found an opening and was able to nail a three. So Wagner wants to concentrate on number 22 right here with the basketball. Make sure that they don't leave him available for an open shot. Remember, Northfleet is on the bench with two quick fouls, Cap. Yeah, that's a big factor. Here comes Prescott off the drive. His second basket for four. Good play right there. Would have given go action off the high post, and Sam Prescott is stepping up. All the Mount players can really guard. They, they're passionate about their, they get in a great stance defensively. There's Ortiz. He's been physical with his drive. Wack is all over Latif Rivers. Rivers slices the defense anyway, and then it looked like there was a poke from behind. The foul's going to be on the Mount. Look at this previous possession against the zone of Wagner. Ball goes at a high post. An excellent job by Graves giving it back to Sam Prescott. Good little ball movement. Wack just picked up his second foul, that's, Tim. That's a big foul. Eighth team foul on Mountaineers, and so Rivers at the line for two shots. Sixth in the league at 82%. Let's get back to that. Wack and Northfleet now with two fouls. So not to the bench. Bola hand back in. And for Rivers, that's his first point of the day. He averages 13 and a half per game. Wagner back up on top by one. This is what you call a seesaw battle. All right. All right, here's the zone. The zone again. Prescott's played well here at number three. High screen action, Prescott getting a look, Folahan in the middle, here's Nwando. Nice drive around Folahan, the putback by Danaher, his first basket for two. Well, if you play zone defense, it's harder to block out, and Danaher took advantage by finding the crease and capitalized. That is our sixth lead change of the afternoon. Ortiz for Parker, too strong. And it's out off of Danaher. And so Wagner will reset. Huge factor is Taylor Danaher at keeping guys like Noah Fall, Noah Fall Fullahan off the backboard. Wabdu to the bench, replaced by Miller. The intensity in this building is truly unbelievable. Rivers from the baseline doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. Again, Mount must gain rebound. All five guys better get back. They're allowing the net. Seahawks to another reset. Here's Burton. For three. Off an offensive rebound. It always seems to hurt you. And Marcus Burton, again, has been such an X factor off the bench. And the Mount wants time. The Seahawks have energized their fans. They were 10 and 2 at home this season, looking for another one. Here's this look right here. Kenny Ortiz, obviously, in the middle of it. You see the. Ability of Marcus Burton to spot up behind the three-point line. He drew the extra defender, Prescott, dropped it off perfect. And in rhythm, Marcus Burton knocks it down. Burton averaging 11 points per game this season out of Charlotte, North Carolina, shooting threes at 36%. And you made the point previously in this nine-game win streak, Marcus Burton's been averaging 13 points a game off the bench. He had a game last weekend against Robert Morris where Wagner went on a 17-0 run to close out the first half and change the game. Burton had four threes during the spurt. He can light it up. Back to man-to-man -man for Wagner. Under five minutes to go in the first half. 
Mountaineers basketball down by two. Prescott. Oh, he wanted to throw a lot, but he turned it over. Intercepted by Latif Rivers. Pulls up for three. Pump now, for the board. The offensive backboard is what Mount has got to do a better job. Great job by Orlando Parker running that rebound down. That came out to the foul line area. Rivers Second now chance opportunities are really helping Wagner. 0 of 7 is the Wagner guard. Finally gets his first basket there. He's got four points. And who delivered it? Kenny Ortiz off an offensive rebound. Another reset for Wagner. And Ortiz has been able to deliver to open players after the offensive rebound. This is big possessions now for Mount. They've got to weather a little bit of a storm. Rashad Wax got a lot of help by Orlando Parker. They know how valuable Wack is. Against the double team, off glass. Wack has seven. That was a tough shot. Wow, degree of difficulty. Big time move by Rashad Wack. Wow. And Wack being aggressive despite having two fouls. Ortiz floats it, but does not get the roll. Last touch by the Mountaineers. Look at this move by Rashad Wack against a big shot blocker, full of hand, goes with the off hand, off glass, big time. How will you spend the next four years? Living more than 200 years of faith and tradition. Embracing your passions. Exploring nursing, teaching, business management, and so much more finding answers inside the classroom and out, pushing yourself further, being a team player, celebrating, while expanding your boundaries, your conversation skills, your friends list, and everything you thought you knew, all at Mount St. Mary's University, a Catholic university with more than 30 majors and minors to choose from, one professor for every 14 students, 16 Division I sports, 80 clubs and organizations, and where 97% of graduates find a job within a year of graduation. So how will you spend the next four years? Take a look around. From the Mount, you'll see your future. To find out more, visit msmary.edu. Back at the Spiro Center in Staten Island, New York, Paul Vitino and Tim Capstraw with you for the NEC semifinals. The Seahawks with a two-point lead in the first half. Let's go back over to Matt Martucci. Well, guys, Tim uh, had, read, had, had uh, mentioned Sam Prescott as one of the X Factors for Mount St. Mary's. Well, a year ago when Jamie and Christian took over the program, he wasn't exactly sure what he was going to get from the Marist transfer. Prescott ended up on the bench and even cleverly nicknamed the guys that came off the bench the bench mob and was a major contributor. And now a year later, he's a starter and obviously making an impact while uh, Julian Northwood is on the bench. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Matt. You know, Prescott had a 44-point game last year against Bryant. He can light it up as well as anybody coming into today's action with 1,165 career points. I'm sure in that timeout, Coach Jamie and Christian emphasize boxing out the most basic and fundamental, but Mount's got to do a much better job of blocking out Wagner. Get too many offensive rebounds. they got nine so far. Ortiz against Northfleet, the block, and if that's on Northfleet, it's number three. He just got off the bench cap, and I think he's going to have to go back. Let's take a look at it. See, knowing that he's got two fouls, that's excellent coaching by Wagner to allow Ortiz to go at Northfleet. Not a whole lot of contact. It's it, the team's ninth. Jamie and Christian telling referee Frank Scagliata, how do you do that? Ten points now for Ortiz, 4 of 4 from the line. And back comes Nwandu for Northfleet, who goes to the Pines with three field goals for six. And three fouls. Remember, he was sitting a long time. That's a big storyline in this game that Julian Northwood's had to sit. And now he's got three. Remember, Wax got two fouls. Can Mount well, just hang in there for the next three and a half minutes? Northfleet with nine 20-point games this season. He truly is 
the go-to guy for the Mountaineers despite all of their options. This foul on the Seahawks goes on Latif Rivers. That is his first and the team's fifth. You look at Northfleet, dejected on the Pines, realizing there's nothing he can do right now to help his teammates as Danaher goes back to the bench and Gregory Graves checks back into the game. He's out there with Miller and Wack and Prescott and Nwandu's got the basketball. The Mountaineers are down by three with 3.05 left in the first half. But Folahan just makes his presence known on drives. Clock winding down, Wax is gonna look to make a play. How about a three? Wow, you give him any kind of space and Rashad Wack will make you pay. Wack and Prescott have played very well. The guards, I mean the three guard lineup, that's what you get with Mount, the three seniors, and they're playing well. Wack has 10. This is a terrific game. Anderson poked away by Nwandu. Anderson got it back. He is full ahead, the bucket, and the foul. Loose balls, 50-50 plays. And end up is a lot of scrambling going down on the floor, and then off the scrum, Fullahan gets it, and finishes it. Duandu picks up his third personal and the team's 10. Fullahan to the line, where he's at 64% this year. Attempting to complete the three-point play. Ash replacing Duandu. So Norfleet and Duandu, two of the Mountaineer guards, have three fouls apiece. Graves the rebound. The Mountaineers trailing by two with 2.20 left in the first half. Here are the Eddie C semifinals. The winner survives to meet the winner of Robert Morris and St. Francis U. The loser is done. Wack harassed by Anderson. 12 seconds to shoot. Here's Wack again. Full of hand the rebound. Four, three, short. Big, and that, that's the box out that Mount St. Mary's has to have. Greg Graves doing an excellent job, and he gets the second foul on Neofal Fullahan. That's what Mount is stressing, their ability to block out. The oldest of fundamentals is enormous in this game, and Graves did a great job in that possession. 16 foul on the Seahawks. Fullahan to the bench with four points. Orlando Parker back into the basketball game. Our leading scorers, Ortiz has 10 for the Seahawks. Wack has 10 for the Mountaineers. Anderson taking chances. Parker with the steal. Here comes the one. Anderson for the slam of Gemma. Wow, baby. Defense to offense, and boy, nobody's more emphatic than that guy, Dewan Anderson. He's got four. Can Wack answer? He does. The bucket and the foul. What a sequence of athletic plays on both ends of the floor. As Dwan Anderson does it on one end, and then Rashad Wack with an impressive good answer on the other. The foul on Rivers, his second personal and the team's seventh. Rivers is going to head to the bench with four points. Langston Burnett, a sophomore, will check into the ball game. Wack with a chance to cut the lead to one. Doesn't do it, Parker with another rebound. This game was helter-skelter and early. Nobody could take care of the basketball. It settled into just a terrific game. And by the way, that was the Mountaineers' first trip to the free throw line today. Under a minute to go. Out of space for Ortiz. He's attacked well in this game. Anderson pulls up, that's outside of his range. And the air ball goes out of bounds. If you're Coach Bashir Mason, you don't want Anderson taking that shot. Forty seconds on the game clock, 32 on the shot clock. Impressed with Mount, they're hang hanging tough despite foul trouble on the road. Prescott attacks the rim, the putback by Graves, 
and he'll go to the line for two. Get another confident play by Sam Prescott getting into the paint. Not finishing, but forcing rotation so Graves can go up. Kind of retrieve the offensive rebound and there's contact. Burnett picks up his first and the team's eighth. Graves, a sophomore out of Sterling, Virginia, is at 68% from the line this year. He needs both to tie the score. He's halfway home with three points. Black to the bench with two fouls, replaced by Malik Howard. Burnett will also take a seat. Burton back into the game, and the Seahawks will try to get off a shot as Graves connects on both. We are tied at 31 with 29.6 seconds left in the first half. It has been a real Donnybrook, and why not? It's the <laughs> NEC semifinals. Cap, it's a one-bid league. You've got to win it all to go to the dance. Uh, well, you don't get Donnybrook much anymore. Uh, you know, that's it. You're, you're so right, though. What, the, the stakes are, they can't be any higher, right? I mean, it's, it's for seniors, for guys, uh, even other, this could be your last game of the season or the last game of your career. These are two 19-win teams. They have both had very successful years, but Cap, as you know, success is truly identified when you're in a one-bit league by getting the ticket to the NCAAs. Yeah, I know that well, unfortunately. Because I never got one. Leading scorers, Kenny Ortiz has 10 for Wagner. Wack has 12 for Mount St. Mary's. Northfleet is on the bench with three personal fouls for the Mountaineers. Wandu also has three. Mountain has done a fantastic job of, uh, with foul issues and their inability to really rebound the ball well to be right there in this game. Well, obviously, the score is tied. Wagner, with the shot clock turned off, will be able to take the final possession. Yeah, it'll be in this guy's hands. You can guarantee that, Kenny Ortiz. Got to wind it down, you would think. He's got Burton and Parker and Anderson and Moody on the floor with him. That's Parker and Burton. He can shoot from anywhere. Guarded by Howard. Drives on Graves. Doesn't get it. It's tipped up and we got a foul with 4.6 seconds to go. It's on the Seahawks and so the Mountaineers have a chance to take the lead. Ideally, you'd want Marcus Burton to make that play later in the clock, or, or, so you don't allow any time to really expire, trying to take the last shot of the half. For Anderson, his second personal, the team's ninth. Byron Ash to the line for a one and one. The freshman out of Washington, D.C. is at 64% on the season. Burnett back into the game, replacing Anderson. And the Mountaineers, Lead it 32 to 31 as Ash connects for his first point of the day. The toughness and composure by these Mount guards, big time. How about that freshman? 4.6. Oh, the steal by Prescott. And he converts at the buzzer. The what? Mountaineers close out the half with a quick four-point surge, and they've got the lead, 35 to 31. Wow, can momentum change fast in compliments of Sam Prescott and his ability to get a steal, grab it, and then pull up and knock it down with only four seconds remaining. Mount is going into halftime, and they are all pumped up about it. The Mountaineers live by their bread and butter. It's called the turnover capper. And, and you saw there, it was executed to perfection. And Matt Marcucci is standing by with Mountaineers head coach, Jamie and Christian. Coach, you walk into the break with a lead at halftime despite Northwood foul trouble. Thoughts on the first half? Well, you know, they're such a good team. They're so talented in their ability to rebound the basketball. And, you know, we just got to continue to try to make this a, a track meet. You know, they're really good at playing in the half court. I don't think we score as many points as we want to, but the tempo has been really good for us. Your message uh, is in the break. Well, you know, we're just preaching toughness. I mean, they're such a tough team, and we respect them so much of the ability to make plays. And so we just got to continue to be the tougher team. If we do that for the next 20 minutes, we'll walk out of here with a chance to play in the championship. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Guys, Jamie and Christian. Well, we could not have a better game here in Staten Island today. We're glad you could join us for the NEC semifinals. The Mountaineers used an eight-point run, and they lead it at the half by four. 
I am a student. I am an athlete. This is my pride. This is my family. In the classroom and on the field. A home away from home. Bound to community. Committed to excellence. Determined to succeed. I will not fear my opponents. But I will respect them. I will fail, but I won't quit. I am a player. I am a teammate. I will rise to the challenge. This, this is NC Pride. You're a Northeast Conference fan. You want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up. NEC.TeamFanshop.com You'll find an awesome selection of over 1,100 items, including polos, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, your office, or even your car with the best selection of NEC team gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Northeast Conference fan. Head to NEC.TeamFanshop.com Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full-time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Staten Island, where the Mountaineers have a four-point halftime lead in the first battle of our NEC semifinals. Later on today, it's Robert Morris and St. Francis U. The two winners meet in the NEC championship game. Well, you know, both teams are well represented in the end-of-year Northeast Conference awards. It just had a figure, right? How else could we give you such a good battle like we've had today? Let's get a listen as to who they're joined by with those accolades. We'll start with the NEC's all-rookie team. The future is bright in the backcourt with three guards on the squad. Fairly Dickinson's Matt McDonald led NEC freshman with 53 three-pointers on his way to averaging nine points per game. We take a look at the all-NEC third team and Central's Kyle Vinales missed some time with a finger injury, but then he came back and led the Blue Devils into the NEC tournament. He averaged 17 points per ball game. Let's check out the All-NEC second team. Bryant guard Diami Starks was fifth in the scoring race at 19 points a night. The junior collected five 30-point games and can score from anywhere on the court. And now, here are your all-conference selections. There's plenty of firepower, but it's LIU's Jason Brickman who became only the fourth player in NCAA history to reach 1,000 career assists. He leads the nation at 10 assists a game this season. Robert Morris has the Jim Phelan Coach of the Year and Andy Tool. The Colonials won the regular season title at 14-2 despite having only eight players for most of the season. The NEC's most improved player is Bailey Dickinson guard Sidney Sanders of Charleston, South Carolina. The junior up to scoring average from less than five points a night to nearly 20 a game. That's second in the NEC. In fact, he hit 35 times on the season as he helped the Knights upset both Seton Hall and Rutgers. Wagner guard Kenneth Ortiz is the NEC Defensive Player of the Year for the third straight time, and that's a conference record. The senior from Newark can do it all at both ends of the court. In fact, he's the heart of this team. He ranked second in the NEC with two steals per ballgame. 
but he can also do things offensively as well. The NEC Rookie of the Year is Malik Harmon of St. Francis U. The guard from Queens, New York, led NEC freshman in scoring with more than nine points a game to go with three assists a night. Harmon, who started Chrysler King High School, sparked a huge upset win over Navy with 20 points. And the NEC Player of the Year is Robert Morris guard Carvel Anderson. The senior from Elkhart, Indiana, leads the league at nearly 20 points a game. Anderson became the fourth player in NEC history to shoot 50% from the floor and 45% from downtown. Congratulations to this year's winners for another great season of Northeast Conference basketball. We're at the NEC semifinals where the Mountaineers used an eight-point run to go into the locker room with a 35-31 edge. Glad you could join us for NEC semifinal Saturday. Coming up after this one, it's Robert Morris and St. Francis U. But right here at halftime, Mount St. Mary's leads Wagner by four. Let's send it over to Matt Mortucci. Guys, a very special guest with us. It's Dr. Richard Garassi, the 12th president of Wagner College. And Doctor, welcome. Enjo Thank you. Enjoying the first half? Very tense game. Very, very well played by both teams. Very, very fast game. We're uh, at this point about a year and a half removed from a, a tough time for the Wagner community in, in the Hurricane Sandy storm. Just how has the university rebounded and, and what was that time like for you? Well, we're in great shape. The college wasn't affected that dramatically on campus per se, but the community around us was, particularly on the shore. Our students have been fabulous. To this day, we're, we're rebuilding and helping families get back together and back, back on their feet. Our students are great in voluntary work. And as far as what you have right here, the, the youthful Bashir Mason, the youngest head coach in Division I, what can you say about him? He is a gentleman, he's a great coach, he's a great role model for our students. Has his master's degree in elementary education, which he got this season while coaching. Always great to see you, and uh, best of luck in the second half. Thank you so much. Dr. Richard Garassi, the 12th president of Wagner College, 
hoping for uh, a better 20 minutes for the Seahawks. Paul, back to you. Well, thanks so much. That good news for you, Matt. The crowd here at the Spiro Center is hoping for the same winning 20 minutes. But right now, the Seahawks are down by four. Snyder's of Hanover sourdough pretzels. Baked, broken, then seasoned with mouth-watering flavors like honey mustard and onion, cheddar cheese, hot buffalo wing, and more. Snyder's flavored pretzel pieces. It's not just a pretzel, it's Snyder's sourdough. Hello, I'm President Richard Grassi at Wagner College in New York City. Our campus is one of America's most beautiful colleges, located on Grimes Hill on Staten Island. We overlook the Manhattan skyline, New York Harbor, and the Verrazano Bridge. From your very first days at Wagner, you'll have the chance to apply what you learn in the classroom, whether you're an English major or a business major, to real-world problems. We call it the Wagner Plan for the Practical Liberal Arts, and it's received much recognition as a truly innovative curriculum in higher education. You'll quickly learn that we encourage our students to be engaged with the world around us, both locally and globally, through internships, projects with our community partners, and a wide variety of applied study. This is a very friendly and positive campus. I invite you to come visit us on Grimes Hill and to learn more about Wacker College. And when you do, please stop by my office and say hello. Basketball isn't just my favorite sport. It's my passion, and I want to take my game to the next level. That's what it's about. The better I am as a coach, the better they are on and off the court. And as players, they deserve a chance to learn as much as possible from the game. As a parent, that's what's important to me. If basketball is your game, elevate it at USAP.com. You're a Northeast Conference fan. You want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up, nec.teamfanshop.com. You'll find an awesome selection of over 1,100 items, including polos, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, your office, or even your car with the best selection of NEC team gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Northeast Conference fan. Head to nec.teamfanshop.com. Snyder's of Hanover sourdough pretzels. Baked, broken, then seasoned with mouth-watering flavors like honey mustard and onion, cheddar cheese, hot buffalo wing, and more. Snyder's flavored pretzel pieces. It's not just a pretzel, it's Snyder's sourdough. It's the NEC semifinals. Wagner trails them out by four at the half, and Seahawks coach Bashir Mason is standing by with Matt Bartucci. Coach, down by four at this point. Uh, adjustments for the second half. Uh, I thought the first 20 minutes, they got us to play at that pace. Uh, this half, we'll slow it down a little bit and execute our half good offense. They ended up shooting 50% against your man-to-man. -man. Do, do you go zone? Uh, we'll mix some in. We went, in, we went to it a couple possessions, and they scored on that as well. So it's just our guys, our effort right now. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, Bashir Mason, back to you. All right, Matt, let's look at uh, the Snyders of Handover halftime stats capper. Well, you know, very even because it's been that type of game. I thought that Mount, I thought there was a bigger discrepancy in rebounding, but they did a good job. They've got to make sure that the Mount stays even on the rebounding. Uh, bench points even, points in the paint even. Mount has been more physical in the paint than I had anticipated. Wagner has that advantage, but Mount has been able to neutralize it. Neither team led by more than four. The score was tied six times and we had 13 lead changes, including the lead change near the end of the first half when the Mountaineers closed out the session with an 8-0 run. And you know what, Cap? They did it with some good defense. They sure did. That's what they do. They, they can defend and they can turn you over. And uh, that's going to be the part of it. it you heard Monsieur Mason uh, allude to tempo. That type of pressure defense and taking chances. Uh, Mount scores. They're going to come out in that full court trapping pressure. Wagner's got to handle it. Remember, Wagner was 17-0 this year when giving up 70 points or less. Now, right now, they're on pace to give up 70 points. They were only 2-11 when giving up more than 70. Well, Rashad Wack, as you looked at his shot right there at 12 points in the first half, I thought Mount did an excellent job of having a couple players in a bit of foul trouble. Northfleet with three. And Nwando. And Nwando and, and still having the lead at the half, and here's Northfleet with the ball. 
Mountaineers basketball in their road midnight blues. They lead it 35 to 31. Ortiz had 10 to lead the Seahawks. Wack had 12 to lead the Mountaineers. Ash Prescott, Wack, Norfleet, and Danaher for the Mountaineers. Anderson, Bolahan, Ortiz, Parker, and Rivers for the Seahawks. 10 seconds to shoot. Norfleet for Danaher. Big time pass. What a drop off down below by Julian Norfleet. Wow. Danaher with his second bucket for four. And we get a quick foul. And let's see, will it be on Ash? I believe so, that is his second. What a beautiful play by Julian Norfleet as he's attacking right now. You don't want to go above Fullahan, you want to go down below, and what a beautiful pass. Great read. You gotta base the quarterback out there is Julian Norfleet, and he reads the defense when he comes off those high screens. Fullahan 6'11", you're not gonna go oh, over no, him, so under. you might as well bury a tunnel. <laughs> Backed away by Ash. Prescott does not finish, hits the ground hard, and he'll go to the line for two. That is the seventh turnover of the day for the Seahawks. And for Parker, that is his second personal. The aggressiveness of Sam Prescott has been impressive in this game. I thought when Northfleet had to sit with fouls, and he, he made a couple of big baskets. Gotta like his approach, too, going right at it. The steal and then the attack mode. Sam Prescott playing with a lot of confidence. Has seven points. It's his first trip to the line today at 80% on the season for Coach Christian. The Mountaineers are now five of six from the line this afternoon, and this is the largest lead by either team today. Fullahan the rebound. Wagner basketball down 38 to 31. Ortiz over Danaher, tipped up and controlled by Norfleet. And boy, do they love to run. Full ahead with the rejection. That's his third block today. Well, he's a, he's a force, no doubt about it. Fullahan, you know that's his rep and the ability to do that. Norfleet in attack mode. You gotta like the confidence though with where the mount is going. They're still not afraid to go at Fullahan, even though he's blocking shots. Norfleet, Ash, his three doesn't go, rebounded by Parker. Parker with his fifth board of the day, he's done a nice job. Rivers through traffic, out of control, and lost the ball out of bounds. Okay, Mount's getting Wagner to play the style they want, they're getting Wagner out of control. Mount wants a chaotic pace, Wagner wants a controlled pace. Rashad Wack. Back on the floor. And that's it. Bashir Mason's going to pull Rivers out of the game for Marcus Burton once again. Rivers has had a very tough day. One of eight from the field for four points. Huge, huge matchup right now. Ortiz and Norfleet. Norfleet's going to make plays. A lot of high screen and roll action. Eight of those 11 points on the run came at the end of the first half. Prescott's three is too strong. Fullahan has the rebound. Impressed with the looks that Mount is getting, though. I mean, they like they're getting open threes. Well, Mount brought a very healthy crowd here today. Nice. Listen to them chanting defense. Yeah, they sure are, uh, for years, they've had great crowd. Dewan Anderson. Fullahan rejected by Danaher, and there's a foul. Danaher goes seven feet tall. So he's about the only guy in this conference who can actually match up height-wise with Fullahan. He picks up his first foul and the team's second. Fullahan at 64% from the line. Now one of two today. He'll get one more. Has five points. Looking for some energy off the bench. Go to this guy, Mario Moody, as Bashir Mason inserts him. He's got both his spark plugs off the bench. Burton and Moody in early in the second half. Replacing Parker. Six points for Fullahan, and it's a five-point game. And that ball is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Marcus Burton right in front of our broadcast position. And so the Mountaineers have 28 seconds to trigger.
Norfleet playing with three fouls. The zone in this possession. See if the whack can get a look. Got a lot of three point shooters. Norfleet pulls up, fades away, and knocks it down. That is his fourth basket for eight. Excellent interior move by Norfleet as he got in the full hand and then stepped back and comfortably knocked it down. He's making great reads off the high screen action. Cap, you don't see a lot of lefty trigger man. How hard is that to defend? Now he is tough. He, they're running everything through Northfleet's ability to play pick and roll right now. He is dominating the play. Ortiz goes to the basket strong, and Danaher has another board for the Mountaineers. Northfleet on his motorcycle. Here he is again. Let's even go high screen and just watch the different reads that Julian Northfleet has. He's going to give it up. See if he gets it back. Here he is again. Now, how, oh, 10 on the clock. Prescott going to make a play. He can shoot from anywhere. Does with the three. It was partially deflected. And they'll say it was last touched by the mound. And they don't like it. And Frank Scagliato says, no, it was touched by Tholahan. It should be Mountaineer's ball. So he overrules Tom Courtney. Good call. Three on the clock. That's what Jamie and Christian wants to tell his team. Northfleet to trigger. Whack is whacked. It'll be a three shot foul. Three seconds on the clock, and you're going to need an opportunity right now to shoot three free throws. First of all, it's beautiful execution out of bounds. He got some good separation with some good misdirection, and there's Anderson with his third foul. Boy, the way Mount closed out the first half, the way they're confidently coming out here in the second. But Jamie and Christian, his poise on the sidelines and confidence is carried over to his team. That's the Seahawks' second team foul. Whack at the line this year at 81%, eighth in the conference. One of two today, he's got 13 points. And he will get one more. And by the way, the Mountaineers, Led the NEC in free throw shooting as a team at 74%. Another reason why they've won 19 games. They take advantage of their opportunities. Graves is back in for Norfleet. Fifteen now for Wack. Here's the full court pressure. Wagner's got to handle it. The 10-point bulge is our largest lead of the day. Neither team led by more than four in the first half. Burton from the other side of the Hudson River. His second three for six, and we've got a quick timeout. And that's one way to get your team back into the ball game. Yeah, that was a huge, huge shot by Marcus Burton. Spark plug off the bench, the trap up top, had the open right there. And Confidently knocks it down. Wagner was desperate for a basket, and Marcus Burton came up big. Great read by Rivers as he was trapped. Nobody rotates to Burton, he makes him pay. Sometimes you just need one hoop to get your confidence back. It turned his ankle a little bit. The winner of this game will take on the winner of Robert Morris and St. Francis U coming up immediately following this one on many of the same television stations you're watching now. Robert Morris finished first and won the regular season championship this year with 20 wins under coach Andy Tool. The Colonials also had the player of the year in Carvel Anderson. And yet, St. Francis U, with a big upset win over Bryant in the first round, is preparing to give them a fight today in the battle for Western Pennsylvania, Tim. What? The Mountaineers trying to get back to the NEC Championship game for the second straight season. Last year, they were knocked off by LIU. LIU won three consecutive NEC titles, the only team in conference history to do so. They did not make the tournament this year, Tim, if you can believe that. Jason Brickman, however, was the shining spotlight for the Blackbirds. We can't say enough about him. We saw him all throughout the season. He finishes his college career with more than 1,000 assists, only the fourth player 
in NCAA history to do so. Yeah, what a brilliant career, what a great player, and any time you're the quarterback of a team or the point guard of a team that goes to three NCAA tournaments, it's an awful lot to be proud of. Tough year for Jack Perry as far as injuries, but the LIU program is uh, certainly the resurgence and the ability to go three consecutive years. Right here, North we've got 16.02 to play. And the Mountaineers have a seven-point lead over Bashir Mason and his Wagner Seahawks. It's do or die on NEC semifinal Saturday. Paul Dottino, Tim Capstraw, and Matt Bertucci with you from Staten Island, New York. We are at the Spiro Center, and they're rocking this building all day long. Mountaineers basketball. This is Graves, Prescott, Northfleet, Nwandu, and Wack. On the floor for right, the up top. Here's the action for Northlane. He's going to make reads now. He's open for three. Too strong, but run down by Graves. Oh, nice look for the one dude. Tipped up by Graves and in. Great up for six. Greg Graves, the sophomore. First of all, retrieves the initial offensive rebound and then the, the big tip right there. Six boards for Graves as well. Both these teams go to their benches and gotten a lift in this game. You can't play the kind of ball they play without going to your bench, yeah, exactly. Jim. That's why they're good. Burton from the elbow gets the friendly roll. He's got eight points. And it's the most confident player that Wagner has right now. He made that three, then the pull-up game right there. That's why he's on the floor. His whack. He's feeling it, too. 17 to lead all scorers for Rashad Wack. Well, against pressure, up the floor, find put shooters on the other end. And the defense can't retreat in time. Do we need a shot clock? <laughs> Burton slows things down, gutted by Northley. The pick from Moody. Burton fires the three and drains it. How he has 11. How about Marcus Burton trying to put the Wagner Seahawks on his back right now? Seven points in a row. They're only going to call it a two. He's got 10. Luandu with an air ball. That's an ill-advised shot. He rushed it. Rivers for Moody. Are you kidding me? Wow. Where did that come from? He has six, and it's a four-point ball game. Northfleet answers for Graves. What a sequence. Man, oh, man. This is fun. It's five slam a jamma time, and class is now in session. <laughs> Holy. Wow. Ortiz will go to the line for two. How about activity in this game as the alley -oop goes to Moody, and he just rams it home. Unbelievable. Then the good answer on the other end as Greg Graves slams it down. Wow. Spiro Center in Staten Island, New York, where Mount St. Mary's holds a six-point lead over Wagner in this NEC semifinal matchup. It's Paul Dottino along with Tim Capstraw and Matt Marcucci, and right there is a very happy youngster, and that is our Hershey Park fan of the game. This spring, say yes to springtime in the park at Hershey Park. Open for two weekends in April. Visit HersheyPark.com for more information.
a, a chocolate bar, a bunch of rides. What could be better except an NEC tournament game, baby? <laughs> Well, there's a couple stars, and both of these guys are, are shining in this game. Rashad Wackus, obviously 17 in the way he's playing Ortiz. And you know, the later the game gets, the more you rely on your stars. And you can bet we're going to see a lot of Rashad Wack and Kenny Ortiz down the stretch of this terrific, I mean terrific game. As far as foul trouble is concerned, Norfleet and Wandu have three apiece for Mount St. Mary's. Anderson has three for Wagner. Here is Kenny Ortiz at the line, coming off of the second personal against Gregory Graves and the team's third. For Ortiz, he is now four of six from the strike. He's got 10 points today. Make it 11, a 73% free throw shooter. That is his first point of the second half. And here comes some pressure. As Latif Rivers is checked back into the game, he's only scored four. And Prescott was trying to hit me. I guess he felt I was the open man, but that's not a good idea. Well, Ten-second call, but that was going out of bounds. Anyways, you know, we talk about Mount's pressure, and that was a big theme. Wagner's done an excellent job with their pressure, and the turnover differential is really even in this game. Wagner's extended their pressure and disrupted the flow, and of Mount. The Seahawks with the ball down by five. Rivers to the baseline for the reverse layup. Moody off the putback. Moody's bounce and athleticism. A big factor. First with the slam and that time with the putback. Put it on the glass, Moody will get it. Eight points for Mario Moody. And the lead is now three. And here's the zone. They're gonna come out, show some zone, matching up, whack off the screen. Oh, rejected by Moody. Mario Moody impacting this game. Excellent job. Read the situation. Went up and rejected Mario Moody. His size, bounce, athleticism. Wow. Unofficially the sixth block for the Seahawks. Remember, they're sixth in the nation at about six blocks a game. This big possession for Mount. Now the momentum has changed. Can Northfleet? That's going to go on Moody with seven seconds to shoot. He bails out Northfleet. And for Moody, that is his second personal and the team's third. So it's a new 35 for the Mountaineers. Runs it down. And they got timeout. Did the Seahawks. Difference maker in this half, Mario Moody. Energy plus. Boy, Wagner was, was teetering. Mount was on a roll. Burton made seven consecutive points, and that guy, Mario Moody, then stepped in and showed his ability around the rim. And that time, on the floor. You know, yeah, the fact of the battle is, regardless of Wagner finishing second to Robert Morris in the regular season standings, the Seahawks are the hottest team in the conference. They have won nine consecutive games. They will take on the winner of this afternoon's semifinal between Robert Morris and St. Francis U. But, boy, the way the Seahawks are going right now, they're cooking. Yeah, they're, well, they're cooking, but they're only they're, they're still down three. And let's credit Mount and the way they've played. Both teams have gone on run, and Julian Northway is going to be a huge player down the stretch for Mount. His ability to shoot, control the action, make different plays will be of incredible importance as he makes this play right now. Out of bounds, it's still Wagner basketball. This game seesawed back and forth with numerous lead changes and nobody getting any separation in the first half. The second half has been a half of runs. Ortiz with the windmill defense. Lack for three. Short, Ortiz with the rebound. And here he goes. 
right to the basket. He has 13. Northley for Prescott, 4-3. Huge, huge basket. Wagner had the momentum going. Northley found Prescott and he comfortably drained it. Prescott has answered some runs in this game. What a terrific performance by both of these teams. Prescott now with 10. That is first, first triple of the day. Burton around Northley and that is rejected by Graves. Good minutes off the bench by Graves. Northley, coast to coast, he has 10. All the way to the rim. Danaher shields off the bigs of Wagner, and he saw an alley and took advantage. Here's Ortiz looking to attack again. Rivers against the double team, gets his own rebound, tips it up, and in. Good effort on the glass by the smaller Latif Rivers. Coming down with it, tipping it in. At only six feet one, but he's got six points, and he brings the Seahawks within four. Here's the zone again. Mixing it up is Wagner in this half. High post open, here's Graves. Got it. Boy, he's been good. Real good. Has so, 10, six coming in the second half. He rejected that shot. He's been scoring comfortly. And you know, you needed to have the performance by a big to match Wagner, and he's done it. Ortiz for three, and he blows the ceiling off the joint. He's got 16. You are so right. That ball was had a little off, a lot of extra arc on it. The mount with the ball and a three-point lead. North Fleet may have been partially rejected, but it doesn't matter. Moody couldn't stop it. Northfleet has 12. It's been a lot of terrific plays being made on both ends of the floor. We got some high octane basketball uh, going on today. This is uh, this is fun. Marcus Burton barrels into Dadaher and a foul. Well, enjoyable. <laughs> Game going on right now. We see Greg Graves with the pull-up game, uh, getting it in the high post area against the zone. Here's the quick answer coming back as the rainbow three by Kenny Ortiz goes down. And then we have Northfleet again. He has been dominant in this game also, making plays a lot of fun. I am a student. I am an athlete. This is my pride. This is my family in the classroom and on the field. A home away from home. Bound to community, committed to excellence. Determined to succeed. I will not fear my opponents, but I will respect them. I will fail, but I won't quit. I'm a player. I'm a teammate. I will rise to the challenge. This is NC Pride. information on how you can save 15% on your next stay at any choice hotel property nationwide. Simply visit the NEC's website at northeastconference.org and click on the corporate partners link to learn more. Choice Hotels International is a corporate partner of the Northeast Conference. It's the NEC semifinals here in Staten Island, New York, where the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers lead the Wagner Seahawks by five. The winner advances to the NEC Championship game on Tuesday. The loser goes home. Let's go over to Matt Martucci. Well, Paul Capper, the message from Jamie and Christian to his team in the Mount St. Mary's huddle, stay calm, stay cool, and stay together. If Wagner wants to play above the rim, we could do that too. But relax, we've been here before. Guys, there's so much energy in those huddles. I wish I had eligibility. <laughs> Capper, Paul, how you doing on years oh, left? Oh, man. It is a lot of fun. 
You know, both Bashir Mason and Jamie and Christian won many a games just like this when they were players. And I have to think, Capper, that that helps them as coaches. Bashir sweating it out right there. Somebody get him a towel, will you please? <laughs> All right, Danahoe had his second personal and the Mount's fourth foul right before the break. Marcus Burton goes to the line for the first time today. He's got 11. Yeah, Marcus Burton has been the most important player for Wagner in the second half. Wagner was down in that double digits, and Marcus Burton came and made seven consecutive points to give the, the Seahawks terrific momentum. Rivers to the bench, replaced by Dewan Anderson. Burton now has 12. And it's a 58 to 55 ball game. The Seahawks coming with some pressure. Northfleet with Prescott, Danaher, Graves, and Wack on the floor for the Mountaineers. Wagner likes to play some zone here because it takes the Mount out of their pick and roll offensive sets that are very difficult to defend, especially against this guy, Julian Northfleet. Wack thought about the three. Fleet's three goes down. He's got 15. Wow. That's his first triple of the day. One of three from behind the arc. Mount's been able to shoot over 50% against the best defensive team in, in, the, in the Northeast Conference. And they are four of ten from downtown. Under 10 seconds to go to shoot for Kenny Ortiz. So he'll pop the three. Too strong, rebounded by Wack. And here come the Mountaineers. Norfleet, the hesitation, the reverse layup. It doesn't go, and it looks like Danaher is going to get charged with his third and the team's fifth. Zone defense, kind of a breakdown, but Julian Norfleet can make something out of nothing he has all game when he's been on the floor. Remember, he had three fouls in the first half, so he's had to been cautious on the defensive end, but offensively, he has been superb. Danaher to the bench with his third foul. Graves is back in for the mount, but he's done real well for them here in the second half. He has neutralized the bigs of Wagner because he has been able to score, and he's also been able to rebound, also has a block. Rivers back in for Dewan Anderson for the Seahawks, and Rivers has the ball. Now gives it up. That's Ortiz with 12 seconds to shoot. Folahan around Prescott. That's a mismatch. Doesn't get it, but Parker cleans it up. The second basket for four. That's the size advantage that Wagner has. Mount has done a good job for a long period of time. Rebound the basketball. They're going to have to do that. The remaining eight minutes of the game, they're going to have to rebound the defensive backboard. Second chance opportunity is a big factor for Wagner. There's Norfleet up top. This is the high screen. Now he's the again. He's going to make a read. The one do. I don't know if this is an advantage against Fullahan. Can he rejected? Not a good idea by Graves, and it's going to be Wagner basketball. Folahan has done a sensational job today of altering shots, but then again, when you're 6'11", you get to do those things. <laughs> Back after this.
And we are back here in the second half with Mount St. Mary's leading the NEC semifinal 61 to 57 over Wagner. It is time to look at today's WB Mason delivery of the game. And Capper, this was a tough one to choose. Uh, tough one because there's been so many great plays. But how about this delivery by Latif Rivers as he throws it up top to Mario Moody in one of the spectacular plays that we've had in this game. Beautiful delivery by Latif Rivers. The W.B. Mason delivery of the game. W.B. Mason office furniture and supplies. You can't go wrong when you buy right at W.B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you're tuned in to Northeast Conference tournament action either, Capper. This game is everything we <laughs> promised and then some. Well, now every possession becomes magnified. You're coming down the stretch. Every screen has to be better. Every cut has to be sharper. You've got to be strong with the ball. Defensively, you've got to be five guys on a string. The blockouts better be superb. The winner advances to Tuesday's NEC Championship game at 7 o'clock on ESPN2. The loser goes home. Because of both the way these teams both pressure, sometimes the pressure might not get to you to the end of the game. Latif Rivers can't get it. Rebounded by Prescott. See, Danaher is a factor defensively also. He can alter shots. Seven feet. It's not just full of hand. He has 37 blocks this year, does Danaher. And now the Mountaineers are slowing things down just a bit, which is certainly unnatural well, for them. Well, because then, uh, Wagner's in zone, and that naturally slows down the tempo. Prescott against Moody. That's a tough shot. It sure is, and he's made tough shots and timely shots all night, all afternoon long. 12 for Prescott, and it's 63 to 57, Mountaineers. Dewan Anderson, offensive foul. Prescott on both ends of the floor with the big basket in that time. Beating Anderson to the stop and drawing the charge. For Anderson, that's number four and the team's fourth. And so Anderson's got to go to the bench. Full of hand with Parker, Ortiz, Burton, and Rivers for Wagner. It is Prescott, Northley, Danaher, Nwundu, and Wack for the Mountaineers. That is Nwundu. The shot was altered by the Seahawks defense, and it's going to be called off for the Mountaineers. Off of Nwandu. And Graves comes back in to replace Nwandu, who takes a seat with 6.27 to go. Our leading scorers for the Mountaineers, Wack has 17, Northfleet has 15, Ortiz has 16 for the Seahawks. Well, Marcus Burton is the most confident Seahawk right here with the basketball. Will the Wagner find a way to get him a look? You know, Mount's got a lot of options to score. See if Burton's coming off some baseline score areas up top. Here comes Rivers trying to create. And he draws the blocking foul and will go to the line for two. Rivers two of two from the stripe today at 82% on the year, sixth in the conference. Danaher picks up his fourth and the team's sixth. Latif Rivers being very intelligent. He's struggling from the perimeter shooting the basketball. So that time elected to take it to the basket and get to the line. Rivers gets one more, and Ash comes back into the game for Danaher. This was a four-point lead at the half by the Mount. They upped it to about 10. In fact, it was 10, and now it is six. This is the NEC semifinals. The winner advances to Tuesday's championship game. For the loser, not much more but going home for lunch. <laughs> Rivers has seven. It is 63 to 58. Coming up on these same stations, it's Robin Morris and St. Francis U after this one. That is a rigid foul by Burton, his first and the team's fifth. Let's head over to Matt Martucci. Technical difficulties on the sideline. We'll get back to Matt in a moment. 6.01 to play. And it is Mountaineers basketball with a five-point edge. This is point guard time, or guard time. Usually these guys control the action. Northfleet and Ortiz are going to be enormous. Again, zone defense for Wagner. The Mount get a look. They want to... Prescott 
pocket with the board. That is a tough way place to go. They are, Mount's trying to go inside against Wagner. I don't know if they'd be smarter just to take the perimeter shot. Burton for Parker. He has six. Hey, Marcus Burton in the middle of that one again with the delivery. Parker finishing. He's playing well also. It is a three-point game once again. Wagner has trailed throughout the second half, but they will not go away. Ash for three. His first triple of the day. He's got five. Big, big, big basket. Wow. Again, I think that's where Mount should just continue to make plays too hard on the interior against the length of Wagner. The freshman from D.C. shooting threes at 37% this year, but that was clutch. Well, how about that? And, and Jamie Christian called him his most confident player, confident freshman. Fire an ass. Ortiz with the crossover. Parker plucks the air ball, and then it is stolen by Ash, who comes up with plays on both ends of the floor. Then Ortiz with the steal and the conversion. 18 for Kenny Ortiz. He's got that refuse to lose attitude, does Kenny Ortiz. Wow, that's the type of play he's made throughout his brilliant career. There's Ortiz digging in. Julian Norfleet off the pick from Graves. 12 seconds to shoot. Wack trying to create something. Falls on the floor. Norfleet, five seconds to shoot. Tied up by full ahead and a foul. The full ahead his third and the team's sixth. The brilliance of Kenny Ortiz is doesn't put his head down. Uh, you know, right there. This is an opportunity, takes it away. Wagner had been you know, back against the wall a little bit. They'd have been struggling offensively, and that guy makes a play like that to get some more, more, more momentum. Northley at 75% from the line this year. This is his first trip to the strike today. He has 15 points and will get one more. The senior out of Virginia Beach, averaging 17 and a half points per game this season has 16 this afternoon, and he puts them out on top by five. Black went for the steal. Rivers the lean in. Oh, he struggled all game long, but Latif Rivers with a big basket right there. The guard has nine. You made the call. Wack went for the steal. You got to play straight up solid defense right now. It gave him an opportunity to get an open look. Under three and a half to go. In a three-point game in the NEC semifinals. Northleaf. Oh, what a nice dish for Graves. He has 12. Beautiful dish again. And then Graves, even though the length of full of hands in there, still found a way to finish. Northleaf fifth in the conference and assists at five and a half a game. He can shoot it and he can dish. Three minutes to play. Burton, the pull up. Graves the rebound. And Jamie and Christian says slow down, be smart. And Northley just lost the basketball. Kenny Ortiz again at that time, getting sneaking in from behind and getting the turnover. Two thirty-nine to play. The mount by five. There's Latif Rivers with an up and down in the finish after struggling throughout the game, and then the answer on the other end is Northley drops it off, and Graves gets his twelfth point, going down the stretch.
Southeast Conference Basketball is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, the official hotel partner of the NEC. And by Snyder's of Hanover. Taste how great a pretzel can be. We've got 239 left in the ball game. It's the NEC semifinals where Mount St. Mary's leads Wagner 69 to 64. Paul Dottino and Tim Capstraw with you. And Matt Martucci is standing by. Well, guys, the, the basketball that you're seeing right now on camera is a special one. It sits behind the end of the Wagner bench, and it's the rock, the official ball of the NEC. But on it are written the names of friends and family members of whom the Wagner Seahawks want to win the Northeast Conference Tournament for. So trying to give them maybe a little bit of extra oomph and maybe hoping it's a magic ball for one more run in this final 239. Guys? Matt, the Seahawks have not been to the NEC Finals since 2005, one and two in championship games. The Mountaineers were there last year, three and two in NEC Finals. Out of a timeout, what does Wagner got? This is Kirk, of course, still. Northfleet picks Burton's pocket, and then the Seahawks able to defend. And it's Wagner basketball. Wow. Norfleet takes it from Burton right here. An opportunity, and then going there, and Burton gets it right back. Wow. Execution and taking care of the ball, and just actually, it is just of enormous importance, and what both coaches will be stressing right now. The almost always calm, cool, and collected Jamie and Christian is pleading to his team to execute right now. Value the basketball. Be sharp with your cuts, be clean with your screens, be strong with the ball. Bashir Mason is telling his group, fellas, we're down nine. We gotta be the aggressors out there. Now, bad news for Wagner Capper, and it's a close game. I'm not suggesting that they're in a position of foul necessarily, but if they do, the Mountaineers lead the NEC at 74% from the line. These guys knock down their free throws. That's not necessarily a comeback strategy, is it? That makes it well, and they're going to have to, but not yet. Certainly a long time of that. that right now, both teams. See, Mount stays aggressive defensively with the lead right now. They're going to pick up full. Again, out of a timeout. Ortiz, Rivers, Parker, Fullahan, and Burton on the floor for Wagner with the ball down by five. This is Ortiz, stripped, but a foul on the Mountaineers. Not shying away from the moment at all. The play wasn't necessarily designed for Kenny Ortiz, but he knows it's his time to shine. Graves picks up his third. For the Mount, it's their seventh. And so Ortiz goes to the free throw line. He has 19 points. Six of eight from the strike. Crockett to the bench, replaced by Anderson. Ortiz leading all scores this afternoon, but his team is down by three. Ash replaces Graves for the Mountaineers with 2.10 to go. Man to man, they're gonna get up and get after it right now. Execution enormous. They don't want to let Northfleet get the basketball. Kenny Ortiz is trying to keep the ball out of his hands, denying him. This is Prescott. He will create around oh. Fullahan. Baby, that was a big, big time move. Another timely basket by Sam Prescott. Every time they've needed something. He's got 14. Ortiz comes right back and answers. That's 22 at a season high for Ortiz. Wow. It's a three point game with 90 seconds to go. The Mountaineers with the lead and the ball. Northley was looking for a backdoor cut and he never found it. The crossover by Sam Prescott, the impressive finish on one end, and then Kenny Ortiz, who's been terrific, down the stretch, finishing on the other. Wow. Graves back in for Ash on the offensive defensive shuffle for the Mountaineers. Rivers with the Seahawks down by three. The flop by Wack and the officials don't buy it. 
20 seconds to shoot. But Ortiz doesn't need it. And he'll go to the line for two. That is what you call leadership. Kenny Ortiz, every possession knows he is the guy, and he is making plays. He is seven of nine from the line today. For Wack, his third personal and the team's eighth. This is a two-shot foul. Ortiz one point away from his career high of 23. Got it. More importantly, it is now a 71 to 69 ball game. Ortiz cuts it to one. One minute to play. It's the NEC semifinals. The winner advances to Tuesday's championship game. The loser goes home. Sam Prescott had a foul on the Seahawks. It's Marcus Burton who picks up his second and the team's seventh. So it's a one and one for Prescott. The senior out of Philadelphia who is one of one for his only trip to the line today at 80% of the season. He has 14 points. And he'll get one more. Six of his 15 have come here in the second half. Tough, big baskets again by Press Godwin. Will Ortiz get another opportunity? Down three right now. Certainly got to chase these guys off the three-point line if you're Mount. It is but a one-possession game, and Ortiz has scored the Seahawks' last six points. Yeah, he's going after it. Under 35 seconds to go in the game. An 11-second differential on the shot clock. Burton for three. Off the mark. Rebounded by Wack and a foul with 26.4 ticks to play. Excellent amount of defense and then retrieving the rebound. Difficult shot for Marcus Burton. Rashad Wack coming up with it. The foul at Ortiz, the team's eighth. And so it's a one and one now for Wack. Three or four from the line today at 81% on the season. He has 17. But this first free throw is the most important shot of the day right now. Rebounded by Parker. And again, it is a one-point game. Coming up on 20 seconds to go. Can Burton get open at the three-point line? Still a lot of time. Doesn't have to be a three. Ortiz wants it to. This is a three. Rebounded by Wack. And he is fouled by Parker with 11.1 seconds to go. Uh, Wack wants to get back to that free throw line. Remember, he's the guy that made the biggest basket of his career just the other night to beat St. Francis of Brooklyn with 2.4 on the clock. The three missed the previous free throw. It is still a one and one, Cap. Mount St. Mary's leads by three. Make it four. Huge, huge, huge free throw right there. 18 points for the shot whack. Two possession game, obviously. Got it. 19 points for Wack. By the way, that was the 19th foul on the Seahawks. And so Wagner calls for time with 11.1 seconds to play, down 75 to 70. So now the Seahawks need a quick two, don't they? Uh, absolutely. Well, obviously, if they converge and somebody's open to the three-point line, kick it out, but just try to work quickly. And then, obviously, you got to scramble and get a foul, play the foul game right after that. Get a turnover, that would be great, but if not, got to give a quick foul. Not a, certainly not a whole lot of time left. The Mountaineers led this one at the half, 35 to 31. They increased their lead to 10 early in the second half, and Wagner has never caught them since. Look at that crowd. The Mountaineers certainly brought a lot of fans with them today. The Mountaineers want to make. Wagner used some time right now. They want to secure the rebound. Ball goes in. They want to make sure they come to the basketball strong if Wagner scores. Parker to trigger. Gets it into Ortiz. Ten seconds to go. 
Ortiz is going to go right to the basket, and why not? And a quick timeout. That's a career-high 26 points for Kenny Ortiz, and Wagner slices it to 75-72 with 6.3 seconds to go. And this is when you're Mount St. Mary's, and you prepare all season for season situations like this. You've got to inbound the ball to excellent free throw shooter. Jamie Christian's got a number of options, guys that he can get the ball to. Wax Wagner. at 81 percent, Norfleet's at 75, Prescott's at 80. Ideally, Wagner would obviously first go for a five-second call, then go for a quick steal, then they got to get the ball to the three-point line. Mount St. Mary's has been to the NEC Finals in three of the past six years, including last season. I wonder if that poise plays into the final moments here. Probably not, Cap, because this place is rocking. It's enough to make anybody nervous. Huh. And coming up after this one, the winner will take on the winner of Robert Morris and St. Francis U. Check your local listings. It'll be on many of these same stations around the country on Fox College Sports Athletic and MSG Plus here in New York. Yeah. Wagner's going to first go for a five-second call, try to get a steal if the ball is inbound at the mount, and an immediate foul. Once again, the NEC final is Tuesday at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. This was a one-point game with just over a minute to play. And the Mountaineers have slowly, slowly tried to crawl toward the finish line. They got a man on the ball, but it's important that Prescott knows that he can run the baseline right now. Remember, Ortiz scored a basket. So moving away from the pressure, it can help you helpful. There he goes. Parker with the defense. The inbounds goes to Wack, and Burton fouls him. So that's going to send Wack to the line with 5.8 seconds to go. Again, it's a three-point game. So Wack is trying to make it a two-possession affair. He's going to get two free throws, though. It is no longer a one and one Black with 19 points. <laughs> 76 to 72, Mountaineers. <laughs> 21 for Wack. And the Mountaineers have a five-point lead. Rivers for Parker. That is a three. Full hand, and it's over. Mount St. Mary's has upset the Wagner Seahawks on the Seahawks' home floor, 77 to 72, and they will be headed to their fourth NEC final in the past seven years. So the Mountaineers will await the winner of Robert Morris and St. Francis U in the bid for the NEC's ticket to the NCAA Tournament. Paul, they are a dangerous team right now. They are incredibly confident. They've got great guard plays. They've got seniors. They've got everything you want to have success. Snyder's of Hanover sourdough pretzels. Baked, broken, then seasoned with mouth-watering flavors like honey mustard and onion, cheddar cheese, hot buffalo wing, and more. Snyder's flavored pretzel pieces. It's not just a pretzel, it's Snyder's sourdough. I am a student. I am an athlete. This is my pride. This is my family. In the classroom and on the field. A home away from home. Bound to community, committed to excellence. Determined to succeed. I will not fear my opponents. But I will respect them. I will fail, but I won't quit. I am a player. I am a teammate. I will rise to the challenge.
This is AC Pride. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. You're a Northeast Conference fan. You want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up, nec.teamfanshop.com. You'll find an awesome selection of over 1,100 items, including polos, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, your office, or even your car with the best selection of NEC team gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Northeast Conference fan. Head to nec.teamfanshop.com. Snyder's of Hanover Sourdough Pretzels. Baked, broken, then seasoned with mouth-watering flavors like honey mustard and onion, cheddar cheese, hot buffalo wing, and more. Snyder's Flavored Pretzel Pieces. It's not just a pretzel, it's Snyder's Sourdough. Paul Dottino and Tim Capstro back at the Spiro Center where Mount St. Mary's has held off Wagner in the NEC semis. 77 to 72 with Shad Wack with 21 points, including the Mount's last four in the final minute all coming from the free throw line. Well, Wack was great, but so was Julian Norfleet, so was Sam Prescott. Great guard play really came through for Mount St. Mary's in this game. They also got a great boost, I thought, from Greg Graves on the interior. Danaher was also a factor. The size of Wagner was somewhat negated because of the good interior play by Mount. And Wagner kept trying to come back. They got 26 out of Kenny Ortiz, but it was not enough. Once again, our final score in the NEC semis, Mount St. Mary's 77 and Wagner 72. Now we send you out to Pittsburgh for Robert Morris and St. Francis U in the other NEC semifinal.